We talk about the overlooked players in this league. Who is it that comes to mind? I don't think Tiffany Hayes gets the respect she deserves. The second round pick out of college consistently isn't valued like she should be sometimes. Hayes is such a steady scorer, improving her average scoring wise in each of her first seven years in the league, constantly evolving her game. Well, there's so many to pick from, but I'll go with another second round pick, Natasha Cloud. Now, she's not really a scorer, but what she is is an excellent defender and one of the best when it comes to running an offense. And when I look back at that 2019 title that Washington won, I just think about how big of a role Cloud played for them. Here's Turner. There's the triple. Mitchell grabs the board. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Oh, they needed that one. Their first make in five attempts to start this game. It's stolen by McCowan. Now the fever moving it up. Now here's Robinson, guarded by Diggins Smith. One of the tallest players in WNBA history, Brittany Griner certainly knows how to use her size to her advantage. Now she's listed at 6'9", but during games she seems even taller. Just so fluid and coordinated for her position. Textbook. Nice pass. Nice catch. Nice shot. To Rossi. Nelsie Mitchell with the block. Turner with the bucket. And first quarter of action, two minutes in. Mitchell outside. Outside Vivians. That's in there. Kelsey Mitchell with the assist. And it's a tie ball game. And everyone knows about Griner's remarkable height, Tim. But how exactly does that help her on the hardwood? Well, Blake, her massive wingspan is really important when it comes to blocking. And maybe more importantly, altering opponent's shots. And offensively, once she gets to her sweet spots and gets the rock, she has the length she needs to shoot over pretty much any defender she wants to. People love the GOAT discussion in sports, guys. But when we talk about the WNBA, there is no argument. I think we can all agree that Diana Taurasi is the best we've ever seen. She's not just a leader in all-time scoring. No one is within 1,000 points of the 2004 first overall pick. But she's also top five in league history in assists. Inside, here's Lavender. Gets that one to fall after missing her first two. One for three from the field. A pass from Robinson gets the ball to a wide open shooter. Selfless play pays off with an assist. For Tarasi, it's not just the longevity. It's the incredible seasons and games. Well, I can start with the five scoring titles in her first eight years. During that third year, she set the record for points in the season. You can continue with 2006 when Tarazi scored a then record 47 points, including eight made threes, which is also a record. Diana Tarazi, simply the best. Good job to create the easy bucket. Indiana trailing. Here's Robinson. Pass to Mitchell. Shoots the three. The second chance effort. It's been a bit of a struggle for her this quarter in terms of scoring the ball. And it's Lavender missing. Count it. Reads the defense so well. It's really what makes Diggin Smith the top-notch point guard she is. It's stolen by Griner. And a fast break now for the Mercury. And the shot goes in. They've worked hard and created great chances for themselves in this opening frame. If they match that effort at the defensive end, look out. Tarasi. Oh, and that one had the right spin on it. It's good. Rarely seems rattled or off of her game. Tarasi makes putting the ball in the basket look effortless. Now here's Vivians. She has seven. Nurse with the double team. They get it back. Lavender. Outside Robinson. And again, unable to change momentum here. Phoenix leading. Here's Reiner. Goes right through for bucket number three. She's a perfect three for three. 
That makes it 10 of their last 12 points coming from inside the painted area, just dominating down low. And obviously, that's something the defense has to address. Time called here. The Fever decide to talk it over. Well, is it too early to call Brittany Griner the best dunker in WNBA history? She's the first player in league history to have multiple dunks in an all-star game. Plus, she's pretty much always ready to throw it down. But they recover it. Pass to McCowan. And she lays it straight in. Tremendous vision from Mitchell to spot the wide open teammate. That kind of unselfishness is contagious. The drive by Diana Tarasi. Got that bucket in no time at all. And you look at Griner's incredible dunking ability, Brian. But what makes all of that possible? Well, it starts and ends with her explosive athleticism, Blake. But she's also quick off her feet, which helps her make the most of her opportunities. At the end of the day, she just has such a unique ability to rise above the rim. Well, you have to like the work in the boards here in the first. Yeah, coming out of the gates with great energy, kind of like they got shot out of a cannon. They're really setting the tone. Boom. Now here's Tarasi. She's got eight. It's good. She has put her foot on the gas pedal this quarter. She's doing a tremendous job leading their offense. Mitchell with it, guarded by Diggins Smith. Outside Vivians. Pass to Mitchell. Jacks up a three. Reiner with the rebound. Stolen by McCowan. And the foul called on Griner. That is their first foul of the game. The first quarter concludes and a double digit lead on the scoreboard. Mercury out in front, up by 10. And back in a moment as we'll get underway with quarter two. quarter in the books as we get ready to begin the second quarter and what do you guys think about the mercury here in this one well we've seen them really get out and establish an offensive rhythm and they're finding ways to score you know playing well and getting good offense and out of bounds the fever will take it so it's indiana now it's a 10-point game and the whistle blows it's going to be on diggin smith that is her first foul of the game. It's stolen by Kia Nurse. Pass to Diggins Smith. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Kia Nurse. Always knowing where everyone is, Diggins Smith has great floor vision, which is critical for fast break success. Now here's Mitchell. Here's Cox. Freeland with the ball to the inside. Cowan, soft touch off the glass. I mean, come on. You think a little tap is going to stop McCowan? No way. She's just too tough. Took him no time at all on that one. Needed a good, quick release on that three-pointer because she knew she was giving up a lot of height in that matchup. You nailed it, Tim. That quick release was the key. Any hesitation, and that shot's blocked. And there's the call on Brittany Griner. That's foul number two for her. That's her second foul, and the last thing she wants to do is pick up a third foul here because it's just way too early in the game for that. Oh, some quick uh, retaliation right there, huh, guys? Yeah, it sure didn't take them long to go and get those three points back. And she makes that one. That's been a go-to shot for them today, fellas. Yeah, they found that sweet spot between the paint and the three-point line, and they are knocking them down. Down low. 13 feet out. Kept alive. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot, and we'll go to the line. Well, it's something we're going to see for a long time in this league. McCowan getting to the line. Knows how to use her body to bait defenders. And she makes both free throws. 
And guys, when you look at Tierra McCowan's rookie year, she certainly did some big things. Averaged 10 points and 9 rebounds per game and also became the first rookie in WNBA history to record more than 20 points and 15 rebounds in consecutive games. Plus, she capped off year one by making the league's all-rookie team. Cox, right side. And a foul called on Griner. That will get her fourth foul of the game. That's her fourth foul and we're not even at halftime. That'll limit her playing time the rest of this game. To the middle, McCowan. Basket is good, the assist by Lauren Cox. And McCowan definitely had a productive rookie season, Tim. But how can she build on that going forward? Well, her intensity on the boards, simply relentless, Blake. So I think she can uh, win a rebounding title in the very near future. Defensively, she's already made an impact with her shot blocking, with her length, and I think maybe uh, in the future she could win a Defensive Player of the Year award like she did back when she was in college. All in all, the future is bright for McCallum. Now they're over to the limit with a lot of time still left. They're going to have to tone it down or they might end up giving up a lot of free throws. That free throw missing. Good on the second free throw. All right, so I'm going to let each of you be in charge of rules. What one rule would you adopt for the league? Are you sure, Blake? You want to give me that power? Well, okay, if you did, we saw the G League try this out, and I like the one free throw rule. Let me explain it as quickly as I can. Any trip to the line is one shot. So if you get fouled in three-point land, you have one free throw for three points. Make it, you get three points. Miss it, you get none. Well, that rule helps speed up G League games, and I liked it personally, but I'm going to go crazy. You guys ready? How about a four-point line? Now, we continue to see deeper three-pointers attempted, and it's led to some huge comebacks, so why not make things real interesting? I mean, what do you guys want to see Allie Quigley pull up from four-point land? A tall, physical presence. Breland does the majority of her damage from the interior. And the basket is good. Her efficient scoring. A nice lift to their offense tonight. Guarded by Diggins Smith. Here's Breland. Terrific assist and a nice finish. Just a solid play all around. They're passing the ball very crisply right now. Their last three buckets have come by way of an assist. The shot by Nurse, no good. Breland left side. Softly drops in the floater. Another good pass. Impressive offensive execution from them. Yeah, passing has kept the defense off balance. Four straight field goals made off an assist. Here's to Rossi. Buries it down low. Well, there she is again, leading by example. Now, Tarazi may not demand the ball, but they're calling her number, and she's delivered time and time again. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Skylar Diggins-Smith. That's her third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the line to shoot two. And working themselves to the line here in the second, a nice way to get their offense going. And maybe cause some foul trouble along the way. That could pay off as well. Phoenix leading. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot, and we'll shoot two at the line. It's going to go on Chantel Lavender. And the first one at the line is good. And that's good as she hits both shots. And it's the fever ball. To the paint. McCowan with the bucket. They continue to get it inside. The defense struggling to just contain them. And look, when you make five in a row from in tight like they have, it also just takes pressure off of your perimeter, guys. Great point. And the basket by Tarasi. Stolen by Diggins Smith. Count it. Good. Consistently carrying a solid workload, Diggins Smith has proven her ability to succeed at this level. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Skylar Diggins Smith. That will get her fourth foul of the game. Due to the bonus, we will head to the line for two. Both shots good from the strike. 
Rossi outside. Field goal number nine. She's nine for 12 with that basket. The more touches she gets, the more the lead grows. Indiana with the ball, trailing by 13. Let's go with a three. Good for the basket, starting off one for one with that shot. Well, sometimes you have a player like Mitchell. She draws so much attention. It allows teammates to get open. Got that one up quick. Risky shot there. Size-wise, height-wise, she easily comes out on the wrong side at that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Well, it was a nice... and that negated the height disadvantage she had there. That's incredibly poor defensive awareness. She's one player you don't want to give up any space to. Up again. She hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. That's something they need to do more of. Get after it on the glass. It certainly wouldn't hurt. Some extra possessions would definitely help narrow the gap. It's crazy. It's just another thing Mitchell does well offensively. Stop and pop. She just kills you with any space. And the Mercury with possession. Here's Petty. McCowan with the rebound. Now the Fever moving it up. Here's Mitchell. That's in there. Kelsey Mitchell with the assist. Yeah, and the floor really opened up for her there. And that was not a good reaction from the defense. Yeah, they look real slow. Count that one. A nice conclusion to a good-looking possession. Coach has got to be happy about that one. That shot off. And that concludes the first half. Mercury out in front. Up 10. And... to get started up again any moment. We're seeing a tremendous game from Tarasi. Her decision making, simply flawless today. Nothing but quality shots from her in the first half. She wasn't forcing anything. Yeah, but I think here in the second half, they may want her to be a little more assertive and start taking more shots, even the tough ones. On the wing, Kelsey Mitchell. A little long. Well, she didn't have a hand in her face, so I thought she was for sure going to bury that. Nurse. And it's in. And guys, when you talk about Kia Nurse, you got to talk about her immediate impact in the WNBA. In her rookie year, she played in all 34 games. In her second season, she started in all 34 games. In year two, she was the team's second leading scorer and also voted to be a starter in the All Star game. Just really good awareness right there on the assist. And it's the Mercury with the ball. Ten-point lead. Wasted no time on that one. They are spraying them home for mid-range today, guys. Yeah, they're finding the gaps in the defense and picking them apart. And with everything Nurse has accomplished so far, where do you see her game going next? Well, she's already shown improvement as a scorer and a facilitator, and I think that will only continue. Her three-point shooting has also taken a big step, so her range might start to extend a bit further. I'd say she has a lot more all-star teams to make, guys. She's just scratching the surface of her potential. An excellent display of passing out there, fellas. I mean, eight of the last ten points have been assisted on. Some great passing. They keep on finding the open teammate. Good ball movement. Great positioning on the putback. Well, that might be the last player in this league you want to get an offensive board. At 6'9", Griner can get the ball back up and in real quick. Vivians defended by Nurse. 
to Lavender. Outside, Vivians. Robinson, clock at six. And another basket for Indiana. Their crisp passing has opened things up offensively. Yeah, it makes the game easy. Ten straight points off of an assist. Um, that's impressive. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. It's going to go on Tierra McCowan. And first trip to the free throw line for her in this one. And we think about the incredible history of the WNBA. Can you guys believe 2021 will be the league's historic 25th season? Well, the excitement with each year increases with the new CBA and exciting stars entering the league. The WNBA is on a great trajectory. I just love the injection of future superstars like Sabrina Ionescu and Satu Sabli. You also still have the current stars like John Quill Jones and Elena Deladon. And don't forget about some of the goats still going, like Sue Bird. Here's Robinson. Knocked away. Tremendous. We love to see a smaller player who can mix it up inside. Here's Cunningham. Here's Turner. And there it is. Backed by her solid footwork, Turner knows a thing or two about scoring inside. Pass to McCowan. Offensive rebound. And she drops it in from the low post. That rebound in the follow, it shows you what she's all about. Ready, determined, and a soft touch to Matt. Nice shot by Petty. Crafty password, getting it down low for the easy deuce. One item that stood out is their ball movement. Things are definitely clicking, and more importantly, it's tough to defend. Pass to McCowan. Add another one in the scoring column for her. He's 7 for 10 from the field. It's so fun to see McCowan pour it in tonight. A true center. Don't see too many like her anymore. Shot on the wing. A shot by Cunningham, no good. The fever trailing. Outside, Robinson. To the inside, Cowan. That's in for her eighth bucket tonight. A hot eight for 11 shooting night so far. And she's having a quarter, converting at a high percentage. And this is her first free throw of the game. The first free throw is good. Second free throw, no good. When you talk about the unheralded players in this great league, Danielle Robinson should be near the top of the list. Uh, back in 2013, she placed first in the league in assists, and Robinson's been an all-defensive member uh, a handful of times. But uh, as her career has unfolded, the Oklahoma Sooner has accepted a role change. And it's Turner missing. Great defense right there to prevent one of the best finishers in the league from converting in close. McCowan with the bucket. They're not rotating quickly enough on defense down low. They've got to provide more resistance inside. And with Robinson, she went from a player who was top five in the league in minutes to one that comes off the bench. And really, she's embraced this new role as she enters her 30s. A tremendous point guard option. There's a reason she's been a target for championship contenders the last couple seasons. Robinson is exactly the type of player who can take you over the top. They get it back. And a good offensive board, and she gets the bucket. Just an incredible display of athleticism. Now, Griner's active on both ends of the floor, and her coaches appreciate that. Pass to Cox. Nurse with the double team. Now Mitchell. The tray. He and Nurse the rebound. Hard to figure out why she didn't bury that one. Not a defender near her. A strong finish under heavy pressure from the defense. That's where the six foot frame of Nurse comes in handy. She can take a hit as a taller guard and complete the play. Again and again, they're, they're pounding the defense and creating high percentage looks from close range. And even under pressure in tight, they've maintained their concentration and converted their opportunities. Here's Mitchell, Kia Nurse with the block. Use 
uses the glass to finish the layup. Good quickness, but great length can help nurse on drives. Allows her to get shots in areas that can't be swatted. What an alert play. Uh, it's just a great job of hitting her teammate on the move. Here's Petty. Ah, no good on the last second attempt there. Well, it's been an exciting game. Plenty of off. And let's take this opportunity to show you our State Farm assist of the game. Well, you can count on her for a couple of pretty assists, just like this one, each and every night. This one's a beauty. It sure is. I mean, look, she's a maestro. Great vision, a gray hat on her shoulders, really everything you want in a point guard. And welcome back as we get rolling once more. Fourth quarter right ahead and what'll be a very well-contested game. Pass to McCowan. Higgins Smith with the double team. Robinson. That's good, and it's Kiera McCowan with the assist. Fantastic dish from McCowan. Easy hoop for the team. Uh, love it when a center can move the ball. Foul call that time on the way up, and that'll give her two chances at the free throw. What a play in attack mode and get inside. And the defense gets their money's worth on that foul, stopping the layup and not giving up the and one. Look, she did the important part at, at the line there, made this a two-possession game. Kicks it out to Mitchell. McCowan up top from the arc. It's rebounded by Phoenix. They've led by as many as 14 points. Number three, Kia Nurse. McCowan with the rebound. One made three for her in this game. Does she focus closer in? We'll see. Solid job by the defense to get in her way as she was going up to the rim. The shot by Nurse, no good. for three. Nailed from three-point land. Look, she didn't get a chance to knock one down in the first, but the defense left for a look, and she nailed it. McCowan, no good. I think that was temporary insanity. I, I don't know. You think she realizes that there's a game going on right now? Because I'm not so sure. You know, I like it. I like it. She broke out that fancy finish. But they'll get another chance. Second shot opportunity. And it's Lavender missing. A real defensive lapse there. She's not a player you can leave open for a jump shot. They're lucky she didn't punish him there. Well, guys, Kia Nurse is one of many WNBA players who have gone overseas during the league's offseason. Nurse has played in Australia, where she won back-to-back -back championships and an MVP award. I can only imagine what that's done for her development as a basketball player. And Tim, we've seen Kia Nurse win a championship in high school, college, and overseas. But do you think she can eventually win one in the WNBA? Absolutely, Blake. You know, she's got that it factor. She's still young, has a lot of room to grow. But Kia's earned the trust of her teammates and coaches, and that's critical in a player's quest for a championship. Plus, I think she's motivated by her previous success to also get it done at the WNBA level. Rejected by Tierra McCowan. Out to the right wing. Back to Vivians. That's in there. Tiffany Mitchell with the assist. Well, as for them being behind in this game, you certainly can't put any of it on her shoulders. She's been tremendous offensively. Tarasi gets the bucket. You have to guard all parts of the court against Tarasi. Once she crosses half court, she will score from anywhere. They get the rebound. Lavender. In it goes for the fifth time and 10 shots for her this game. She's pouring it on in the second half. A really a much better showing than she had before the break. Shot from the wing. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Another miss. She's having an ugly game offensively. Here's Griner. Good once again. That makes her eight for nine this game. Capable of scoring in bunches. 
Reiner hit shots from various spots on floor. Well, that's number five. One more foul, and she's done. A look at the clock. A little under three and a half minutes gone in the fourth. Vivian's misses. Phoenix leading. Here's Nurse. And she gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two free throws coming up. And there's the foul against Indiana. When Nurse gets going to the hoop, sometimes the D has to foul. Great handles, and she has such a solid frame. Both good at the line. Here's the Fever with the ball. Pass to Robinson. The lead pass was put in just the right spot to produce the layup. Well under six feet. Danielle Robinson doesn't care about her height. She can score from everywhere, including down low. She gets that one. Well, tired legs affect you at the defensive end first, and that's what's happening here. You nailed it. And as much offense as we saw early, we're seeing even more of it here late. And that one good. If Mitchell gets to the rim, she's usually going to convert. She's such a skilled finisher. Here's Greiner. And it's... Lavender with the rebound. That's a missed opportunity right there. And she'll be the first to tell you that's one she should have buried. Kia Nurse into the lane. Banked in off the glass. Once again, it's Kia Nurse. The Canadian can get really hot. A tremendous inside-outside threat offensively. Mitchell outside. McCowan. And Diggin Smith pulls it down. The defenders cannot lose track of her because usually that shot will go down. The only place for shots like that, it's in the shooter out before the game. You're one to talk, Tim. <laughs> Anyways, to me, that's just not a shot you should even think about taking. Perseverance, it always pays off on the offensive glass. Fades and shoots. And it's Turner missing. The fever trailing. It's going to take something very special for them to, to come back now. Well, something special and a little bit of luck. And maybe uh, some threes to rain down as well. The drive by Diana Tarasi. And she makes good on the layup. Taking it to the hoop. How many times has Diana Tarasi done that? Probably more than anybody in WNBA history. Time called here. The fever decided to talk it over. Both teams deciding to change it up. Down low. And Cox gets it to go. We see Cox score it from all around the floor, but the closer she is into the hoop, the better Cox is. Here's Cunningham. The putback. It's good on the putback. Second chance buckets, they're always the result of hard work. Here's Wilson. Their comeback hopes are uh, out the window. I think it's safe to say. Yeah, out the window, and the window has been closed. It's a done deal at this point. Let's get home. And the shot is good. Well, look, one of the reasons they're trailing is because we haven't seen enough of that. She has to become a bigger part of her offense. Offensive rebound. An incredibly successful shooter in the college game. I can't wait to see everything Cunningham can do here in the pro game. And so both free throws good this time. And it's a nine-point game here. No mistakes there. And I think you can close the book on this one, guys. Takes the three. And the ball out of play, the Mercury will have it. Now Petty. Misses the layup. No good there. And so it's Phoenix with the W. And in the end, a comfortable win in what was a pretty hostile environment. Yeah, you know, it's never going to be easy uh, on the road. 